G'day. This is not the video that I thought I'd be making this weekend. I was cutting up some aluminium material today and my bandsaw blade snapped. Now normally what I do is, is I reach up to that hook up there, grab a new one, fit it and off I go. I've, I, I typically have uh, half a dozen of them sitting up there and then I discovered I didn't have any. I'd used them all. They're all broken. So instead today I'm going to be showing you how I weld up bandsaw blades. Um, you can buy them ready-made, that's really nice. I've got an odd shape or odd sized bandsaw and uh, I had a, a bad experience once with a, with a blade that was brazed up. Uh, it wasn't done properly, it broke very quickly and uh, I decided, well, how hard can it be? It turns out it's actually reasonably hard, uh, but with a bit of practice and a bit of application, it can be done. This is the first tool that I've developed for doing this. Uh, this is basically a strip of, of flat iron, there's a, a step there and a, a toggle clamp. And I'll clamp the end of the blade in there and run it along and then I shall use that edge there to cut it off. Uh, the blade on my saw is relatively short, it's only 1476 uh, um, millimeters long and so this does it quite nicely. Uh, if you've got a longer one uh, you might have to think of something else but um, uh, this is this gives me a, a, a precise length um, and that helps uh, fit the fit the, the blade to the saw uh, if it's a bit too long or a bit too short it, it, it doesn't work as well so um, this is how I usually start Typically when the blade comes off a roll like this, it's been oiled to stop it rusting. Now that's not a, a bad thing, but the problem is you can't really weld with confidence on, on oiled steel like this. So the next thing I do is, is clean off the ends with some acetone. Uh, because of the way the jig's made, the end should be square. So um, once I can do that, I can put that into my, my welding jig. This is my welding jig. Um, it's made out of a bit of scrap aluminium, nothing terribly uh, complicated about it. But that copper block is just the same height as that. And so what I'm what I do is I I use these, um, they're just a wing nut with a with an oversized washer to uh, hold the hold the blade. I'll do the same on the other side, and then I'll put a run on and run off tab on either side here, so that I can start my my um, arc on on the the run on tab, come across, and then finish hopefully on the the run off tab, uh, and that way I don't get any um, holes or pits or anything like that on the on the end of the blade. So there you can see the the blade to be welded mounted up. I've got my, my tab there, tab there. Um, I'll start the arc now. This blade material is, um, I think it's 0.65 of a millimetre thick. It's half inch wide, and usually I have the the um, welder set on around about or 40, 45 amps. Um, you don't want much, otherwise you'll just blow straight through it. The copper backing helps keep the uh, bead on the on the reverse side flat. It also helps uh, control some of the heat but that lets me go along and uh, unweld. Once welded, the joint needs to be annealed. I've slipped the copper block out and then I'm going to loosen off one of the clamps here so that if that it wants to expand while it's being heated up, it can. Okay, I just take it up to there. I just take it, take it up to red heat and then just let it cool like that. Uh, I'll then take that out and, and do the next. At this point it's worth doing a bit of a, a check on what you've got. 
Um, this one is, is almost reject. Uh, first of all, you can see here the, the, the benefit from having the run-off tab, a uh, run-on tab. Okay, I've blown a hole in that. I haven't blown a hole in here. Um, there's a great temptation to just to, to get a pair of pliers out and twist these off, but you do need to get out an angle grinder or something like that with a thin cutting disc and cut that off properly because if you snap it you could leave a stress razor here. These bands are under a great deal of tension when they're installed and so the slightest notch in there will act as a, as a crack initiator and um, you know potentially fail. Uh, and this is this is the reason here that this is almost reject. Um, I like to get that world bead coming down so I can grind it back flush with the bottom of those teeth. If they're not, you can potentially have the problem that uh, on, on thinnish material, um, that will just jam up. Now, you know, if you, if you obey your, your three teeth in the rule, uh, in, the, in, the well, in the cut rule, that should just be all right. But it's one of those things, it's, it's a bit marginal. You try and keep your weld bead as small as possible because you've got to grind that back. Now, if I flip that round, hopefully you can see the back of that. There's very little, um, I've got full penetration, but there's very little uh, weld build up on there. Well, and that's, so that's a, that's a good thing. Um, so what I have to do now is basically cut off these tabs uh, and then using an angle grinder or a, or a linisher or a bench grinder or whatever I've got, get that, get that down. What, what, you're, what you're trying to do is grind that so that it's basically the same thickness as the blade, which is why you want the good penetration. To grind these I've got, I've got a piece of uh, water pipe and I use that basically as a support so I'll come along and I'll, I'll slice those off but when I'm grinding this I'll have that back against the pipe so that it just gives me a, a surface to work against. This one's a used blade, I've, I've re-welded that. Um, I find that if they break away from the previous weld you can do that quite nicely. If they break on the weld it could be a bit iffy. Uh, as, you, as you grind you do reduce the material thickness a little bit so there is a, a natural stress riser. So trying to, to weld that uh, can be tricky. These are the two new ones that I made up. Um, as you can see there's plenty of oil on them but not where my joint is so I need to cut those off and then just dress them back to, to flush. These can be welded up electrically, um, you know, resistance weld type thing. This one here I went a bit too far with the, the grinder when cleaning the top edge off there. Now what you can do with that is, is basically cut it there and there and splice in a new piece of, of blade. Uh, you can't run it like that because that'll, that'll bump over the rollers and do all sorts of horrible things. However, one thing when, when you do an electric weld is you, you try you're bending it and seeing whether it'll, it'll snap. And I'm not keen to do much more than that. But, you know, to me that seems that that weld is, um, is, is pretty good and will uh, do what we want it to. So there you have it. Uh, there's a, a welded up blade uh, running your fingers along. And remember that after grinding it, it is hot, so uh, let it cool a while. That's, uh, that feels like it's a reasonably uh, constant thickness. I've, I, I used a hammer just to give it a little bit of a flattening. Um, I try not to, but uh, that's uh, sometimes it, it twists a little bit to do that. But try this out and see what happens. Thanks for watching and I hope this has been of, uh, of interest to people. Um, have a go at welding up your own bandsaw blades.